pursuant to and in. You all start over. Okay. <laughs> this meeting is being held pursuant to and in compliance with ordinance number 20-A, parentheses 16, an ordinance to ensure the continuity of government during the COVID-19 disaster. Okay. I'll call the meeting to order. Does everybody have a copy of the agenda? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll take attendance and as the meeting continues. Uh, Ida Lee just showed up and welcome Ida Lee. You now create a forum. <laughs> Okay, uh, we our next agenda item is the committee meeting minutes from our meeting in October. Are there any additions, corrections, or anything on of that nature for that uh, meeting minutes? I didn't see them. Were they sent out at all? I didn't see them at all, Dick, unless they were just on the um, just on the website and not not post not not um attached anywhere yeah I didn't, I didn't see them either okay well i thought they would have been sent out uh, by carolyn but i guess that's an oversight so we'll we'll pass over that and uh, i'll have to come back to it quickly if i can chime in typically our secretary does that i think that's why they slipped the crack um we don't have a secretary right now and I know Dick, you sent them to me. Um, so my fault for forgetting to send, um, but I think that's just because we typically don't send them. Um, so we'll make sure you all get them before next meeting. Okay. And, and we do have to elect a secretary or unless Dick, you have your, um, the rotation and then that person would be responsible, uh, Rachel, for sending them out or sending them to you to send out. Typically, the secretary just sends them out, but if okay. they, I did it, um, I can coordinate with the secretary and make sure okay. that's right. Thank you. Okay, welcome, Brian. Brian Mason is now uh, on board. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to welcome uh, Ann Oliver, our newest CAC member. She's on audio, not picture. Why don't you say hello, Ann? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, hello, everyone. Hello, I am very happy to um, come on board. And um, I've been a, a resident of Charlottesville for over 17 years. I raised my children here for the most part and um, love Charlottesville. and. I'm just hoping that I can contribute to uh, making it as enjoyable uh, for new families as, as, as it has been for me and my family. So, and I'm also, my profession is I'm a realtor and uh, with Keller Williams um, and um, a mom. So I think that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> Where do you live, Anne? I live on Pantops, actually. I live uh, in Fontana. I met Ann when I was campaigning, and we just really hit it off. So, and Ann, why don't you tell them about you, where your kids go to school? Oh, well, sure. I, I found my um, my video. Ah, okay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, my children, um, where they go to school now or where they went to school? Oh, where they went, yeah. Okay, so my uh, my son went to um, started my both of my children started at Montessori, and my son went to Stony Point um, for two years. Um, but my daughter um, was at Tandem, and because I was raising them on my own, I it was just easier to have them in the same place. So I transitioned my son to Tandem, 
Uh, my daughter graduated from Tandem and went to William and Mary. That's and, it. Yes, and graduated from there. And my son uh, went from Tandem to St. Anne's. <laughs> and, that, and now he's in his fourth year at um, UVA. That's it. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, I'm very, um, very grateful. Um, just this community has been very supportive um, since I've been here. And I just think it's an amazing place to raise a family. So I want to do everything I can to, to help keep it that way or improve it. Well, welcome. I also would like to ask uh, Lou Falzer to uh, tell us a little bit about his background because you were brand new to us at our October. Mm -hmm. We didn't get a chance to uh, get any background on you. Can you unmute? Lou? Huh? It says you're on board, but I don't see you or hear you. There you go. Okay. You got to unmute. There we go. There we go. There we go. I'm hey, I, I'm I'm uh, um, uh, not patient enough with my computer. So, like most other people my age, we I I, I found out I don't have much patience with computers anymore. Um, I, I, do, you, do you have me on screen now? Yes. You yep. do. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, I'm. Uh, I retired uh, from a career of sales and marketing, uh, which I started in California, wound up in Concord, Massachusetts, where our kids went to high school, and then they both went to college, out back to California, and we decided to retire in uh, Charlottesville about five years ago. And um, it was done for a number of different reasons. We have very good friends that moved down here from Concord about three years before we did. He, uh, he teaches at UVA and he kept on telling us what a wonderful place this was. And uh, uh, at that time, both my wife and I had family on the East Coast and this was about as far as we want to be away from them. As it turns out, her, <clears throat> Kathy's brother then moved to Idaho. <laughs> but we, I was not gonna move to Idaho and neither was she. <laughs> So uh, I was asked to join this. I, I, I was looking for getting involved in something involved uh, civic uh, uh, with, within Charlottesville uh, or Albemarle County uh, more accurately. And I, I'm really uh, feel glad that hopefully I'll be able to contribute uh, to whatever we need to do uh, to make things better for, uh, for the county of Albemarle, which is a nice place to live. You are our new vice president has you were elected at our last meeting. Right? Yeah, I was the only the only person who waved his hand. How stupid am I to be <laughs> volunteer? I was in the Navy for three years. The, you know, the is issue is you don't ever volunteer, but I did. So yeah, I am I'm the new vice president. So people have to be very careful what I say. Okay. <laughs> I, I see Brian there, Brian Mason. Welcome. Uh, I don't think anybody else has come on board since. So let's move on to the Overlook Hotel project update. Who is going to kick that off? Um, I'll kick that off. Um, Andy, this is Andy. Andy Reitelbach, senior yes. planner. OK, Andy, go ahead. OK, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Andy Reitelbach, and I'm a senior planner with the Albemarle County Planning Division. Um, I am the planner who's leading the review of this rezoning request, Pantops Overlook Hotel. So I'll just give a brief uh, introduction, introductory presentation on this project and why it's here this evening. And then I'll turn it over to Justin Shimp of Shimp Engineering, who is representing the applicant for this project. So like I mentioned, this is a rezoning application. It's currently under review by the county. Its application number is EMA 2020-13, and it's uh, known as the Pantops Overlook Hotel. 
So to some of you, um, this may look familiar because it did originally come before uh, the CAC. The community meeting for this was back in January of this year. So I know obviously there's a few new people on the CAC now who wouldn't have seen it. Um, but because it has been such a long time since that initial community meeting, the applicant did want to come back uh, before you all and give an update on it. Um, because they are looking to go to the planning commission within the next couple months. So as a reminder, um, this is just an aerial view of the parcel uh, under consideration for this rezoning. It's on the south side of 250. You have the Rivana Ridge Shopping Center where Giant is there at the bottom and kind of the lower right corner of this picture. And then in the lower left, you have the Carriage Hill community. And then the auto superstore is the um, auto dealership directly to the north, northwest of the subject property. Um, so the applicant has submitted this application to request to amend their application, the application plan and the proffers that are associated with two previous rezonings, ZMA 1998-3 and ZMA 2002-8. Uh, sorry, 1998-20 and ZMA 2002-8 to permit a hotel on the property. So this parcel and several of the other adjacent properties nearby, um, including the Rivana Ridge Shopping Center, are all zoned PDMC, which is planned to develop mi mixed commercial. So with this application, they are not proposing to change the base zoning district. It would remain PDMC. They are just proposing to change the plan and the proffers that were approved with those original rezonings to allow a hotel on the parcel, which is not currently permitted. And then there are no dwelling units proposed for this property um, either. It's strictly the hotel. Um, uh, the project is in the Rivanna Magisterial District and the parcel is um, a little over 2.6 acres in size. So the timeline of this project, as I mentioned earlier, the initial community meeting for this application was held back at the beginning of the year on Monday, January the 25th. Um, since then, it's been under review by staff. There's been a few different resubmittals and uh, the Architectural Review Board has looked at it. So it's gone through further review um, by county staff and the ARB since then, but it has not yet gone to the Planning Commission. However, the applicant has um, expressed an interest and going to the Planning Commission sometime in the early part of 2022, likely January. That has not been scheduled at this time, but I'm hoping it will be either this week or next week. And so I'd be happy to send out an update email to the CAC once that, um, that Planning Commission meeting has been scheduled. And then the Board of Supervisors public hearing, of course, comes after the Planning Commission public hearing. And the Board of Supervisors meeting has not been scheduled at this time either. Um, so my name and my email address are down at the bottom of the screen if you'd like to email me uh, requesting more information, or I've also started a contact list um, for this project to email out updates. Um, so just email me, let me know that you'd like to be added to that, and, but I'll probably include the entire CAC list on those update emails, so um, I'll probably capture all of you that way as well. And that's the end of my part of the presentation. And now I'll turn it over to Justin Shimp of Shimp Engineering to talk about the changes that have been made since January and what they are currently proposing. Thank you, everybody. Andy? Yes. I have a question. Okay. Uh, just general question that, uh, that how many new hotel rooms have been added to Albemarle County over the last three years or expected to? I mean, it just seems like just moving here that it's been quite vigorous in terms of hotels. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not actually sure about that. That's something I can certainly look into and get back with you. And um, actually Justin or the applicant, they may know as well if they did a um, study before submitting this application. Um, but if Justin or Doug Ellis, who's the applicant, don't know, I'd certainly be happy to look into that and get back with you later. Great. Thank you. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, Justin Shamp, a quick check. Everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yes, good. All right. Welcome, Justin. Uh, 
I'm the engineer for the project and uh, Kelsey Schlein from my office has been handling this. Unfortunately, she has a sinus infection and had to run home early. So I'm gonna step in and go over uh, the updates. And honestly, there aren't that many of them. The plan itself has not changed since we were at the original neighborhood meeting. We do have a few updates. There was a discussion at the neighborhood meeting even with the staff early on about trying to get a pedestrian connection between our property and the SunTrust Bank, which is directly behind us. And then the owners of those parcels, the adjacent parcels have not cooperated with that. So we've set aside that it's not gonna work out this particular project. So that's not gonna be um, in the works. We have been to the architectural review board and the owner has been working hard on some uh, elevation changes and to get back to the ARB for a preliminary ARB here and another one before the planning commission so that as we move forward, there's a you know, understanding on everyone's part of what this will be like in a little more architectural detail that we normally have for rezoning. Um, and so that as we move forward at the planning commission, there should be some kind of action on the part of the ARB saying, hey, here's, here's what we think, <clears throat> here's this project meets our guidelines and we've had a hearing They've made a number of suggestions for revisions and we're making those revisions and we'll be back before the architectural review board. So that's not standard for this type of project, but I think there was enough questions about the, um, how the building will sit the site, what the view sheds are and what the appearance of the building will be that we went ahead and proceeded with that level of review prior to the rezoning rather than after. So again, those will be that meeting's forthcoming. Uh, if anyone wants to attend, those ARB meetings are open to the public also, of course. And you can tune in via Zoom to see the details on those issues if anyone's interested. Um, and last, I think it's a question about traffic. And as some of you all are aware, VDOT is getting ready to put a, a median up Route 250, basically all the way from Wawa up to uh, top of the mountain. And that will restrict our ability to make a full like a left turn out of our site, but we'll be able to go up the road and make a, a U-turn, an R-cut, VDOT likes to call it, which is a, just a, a safer maneuver, truthfully, on a corridor like 250. So our, our traffic, the hotel, it's a large building, but doesn't really generate a ton of peak traffic compared to other uses. Uh, and so, but that traffic will come out, hang a right, go up the street and make a U-turn at the Hanson Road entrance uh, to turn back if you wanted to go left or head west of the site. I think those are the primary updates we had. And I say Doug is also on the call and he can answer other questions that I may not know the answer to. But um, otherwise, the plan proceeds as it has been since, I guess, over a year ago. And we're just going through the process and we'll be coming forward to an ARB meeting and then another public hearing to planning commission sometime first part of next year. So happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Ron, do you want to start off? Ron Brownfield. Yeah. Um, so uh, Abbey Road, does Abbey Road, the west end of Abbey Road, abut your property or not? Or not? It sounds like it doesn't. Huh? Well, it does in a very narrow strip that is unbuildable to get to. Uh, I, I, I remember um, there was talk about putting stairs from there, from your level up that slope to get to the west end of Abbey Road as a pedestrian connector. So, and you just mentioned that the adjacent property owners are not cooperating. So what, have they given reasons or, or you, you don't have a connection to Abbey Road? Well, it's two different ways. So the, the connection we were trying to get to an Abbey Road was up past the SunTrust, which involves going through their property, which is, you know, they don't, they're under no obligation to give us an easement to do. So there is a, if you go, way back to the woods. If we were to clear a bunch of trees and go back to the woods and up a steep hill, there's kind of a path that gets back down towards the residential neighborhood there. Sure. But that's like, no, that wouldn't help anybody. If you wanted to go from the hotel up to the giant, you would go out the 250, walk the sidewalk, come make a turn. You wouldn't go back that way. No. So that's a bunch of land clearing for no purpose, basically. If you go the very back right, the most direct route would be through SunTrust's property. But again, they're not under obligation to give us needs. We've asked for it, but they are not. So, so I guess what I'm asking is the property at the end of Abbey Road is owned by SunTrust. Well, hmm. now I might need to give, Andy, do you have a way to put that uh, GIS exhibit you had back up? Sure, I can um, share GIS real quick. 
or that even the, what you had in your presentation, I think, showed it. Make sure we're talking about the same location. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. yeah. So I've just highlighted the uh, parcel that under consideration for this project. Right. I see. Yeah. So I, I, maybe I've answered the question a lot. So we, we do not have direct frontage on Abbey, bro. Right? There's two parcels in between us, a Sun Trust parcel and then these, a condo built. We do Hanson actually Road. wrap around to Hanson Road, sorry, not Abbey, but that's the route that doesn't really help anybody to go that direction. If you were staying at the hotel and wanted to walk up to Sticks to get lunch, you'd want to go right up the Abbey Road. But we, that's actually yeah, not right. a public right away. That is a private access easement that we don't have rights to go. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's why I was unclear. Okay. I have one more question. Uh, is the vegetation on the very south end of the lot going to remain that's uh, buddy up against Carriage Hill? Yes, that remains undisturbed. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nick here, I have a, a question. I don't, am I on mute? Uh, Go uh, ahead, Dick. Yeah, this, I'm late to this. Um, I don't know what the county discussed on this, but when you leave the property to 250, do you have your own lane going up to Hanson? That is, would be a third lane on 250 uh, in front of, you know, right adjoining your property. Because right now it's only, I think, two lanes going by. So the traffic would turn into uh, moving, very rapidly moving traffic going uphill. How will it be? We do, yeah, there's, right now, there's a third lane that extends across the front of SunTrust. And yes, we would basically tie into that. Yeah, so we, if you left our site, you could stay in that, the rightmost lane, driving up to Hanson Road. You would not need to go out into the sort of normal lanes, if that makes sense. You could, you could exit right into the turn lane. Uh, well, the other question really for the county, uh, I have a Toyota and once or twice, have wanted to get out of the third lane below your property. Uh, and then you have to merge into a lane, one of the two fast lanes going up because the third lane stops at Toyota and remains stopped for the next automobile place. And so I'm sort of puzzled why the county hasn't, and maybe Andy can address this, hasn't insisted on somehow getting that third lane to stay open all the way up from where the other car dealerships are, BMW and the others, to Toyota, and then on through to where you would come on to the road in your property. And well, that's really, a, I suppose, a VDOT issue, uh, but it just occurs to me as one who walks up that way and has driven up that way, that sudden loss of lane at the Toyota dealership is not very safe. Does anyone have a comment on that? Andy, I can I can comment on that if you want me to. The you know the Route 250 has historically been just the two lanes each direction. I know the turn lanes you speak of were added on as those sites in question at a site plan amendment or a new site plan. VDOT required those turn lanes to be built, but so that's that's why you have sort of a, a hodgepodge of those. As each new site comes on, you'd expect VDOT to do the same thing, or they could do a project at some point and actually take the right away. But that's essentially Route 250 has grown up over time from a two lanes each direction into sort of an interim phase. But VDOT's not done a project to actually, you know, condemn right away and take that land all the way through. They can only get it when someone comes along with a site plan in which several properties just haven't done. And that's why you have this three lanes and two lanes back and forth. Eventually I expect VDOT will do a project and take that land and build a lane, but that's a whole, that's a, you know, a long project, long process to go through that they haven't done yet. Well, I think we should leave the discussion for others, but I would just note for the record that it seems to me an unsafe a situation to have that third lane, which does go all the way up from route 20 to Toyota. It's not broken. 
is three lanes from Route 20 all the way up to the Toyota dealership, and then it disappears before it gets to your property, Justin. It's not your issue. Uh, you will have be able to extend the uh, exit lane that is now by SunTrust to you, and that's good. Uh, but the property next to you and the one between that property and Toyota do not have a third lane. So I'm just going to jump right in and uh, uh, Dick, that is a VDOT issue. That's not a county issue. It's a VDOT issue. Okay. And once again, as Mr. Shimp said, uh, you would have to get the right of way or the easement from uh, car lots and from the property owner that is in between where the hotel, where they're, where they're proposing a hotel and that car lot dealership, which is car lots. So I think car lots is built up right to the edge of the road. So they would have to, they would have to give up that land. So there's your answer. Yeah. I had a feeling that was the situation. It's, yep. it's over to VDOT. I hope they will take some action. It's not safe. End of discussion from my side. Sorry to have raised it. So Justin, while the, uh, while the image is up on the screen about your property, could you say again how people will access the property, please? Sure, we'll have an entrance right off 250 in the middle of the property. That'd be a, what will effectively will become a right in, right out once VDOT builds the concrete median across the front. So you will not be able to leave our site and make a left. But any vehicular traffic would just simply come in and out the same location. And then if you're a pedestrian, the sidewalk extends down to our property past SunTrust. And so you would, that will connect to our sidewalk and you would walk up the edge of that road and turn a right and go into the shopping center to do whatever you wanted to do there, whether it be you know, pick up groceries or go to one of the restaurants. Okay, thank you. Another concern I expressed last time we saw this is in periods of heavy, heavy rain, there is significant water runoff at the rear of this property and serious erosion. Has anything been done to mediate that? Well, I don't know anything about any erosion at the back of the property. I'm assuming you're meaning towards Carriage Hill. Is that right? Yes, yes. So, I mean, there's no intention on our part to disturb anything back in that zone. So, there, now there may be runoff. I don't know if there's runoff from the shopping center that comes down there. And I mean, our property in that area is basically just trees. So, I wouldn't expect a lot of runoff. However, that doesn't mean there's not something coming through the property from somewhere else. That's entirely possible. Uh, that, I mean, if if it's an issue and it's causing erosion, you can report it to the county and they'll send someone to look at it. I, but I would say, I don't think it's coming from our property in any way, but it may be coming through our property. I do not know uh, of what you speak exactly, but it, the county does have a mechanism to go inspect that. And if there is an issue caused by anything on our site during the site plan process, they can require us to remedy that. That would be after the zoning's approved and we turn in our own construction plans. If it's from our site, I don't think it would be even our land is just mostly woods right there, but there is a process at the county to handle that. So Andy, is that something that we can ask the county to look at? Um, we can certainly have someone from the engineering division, one of their inspectors, um, if you're notified, if they're notified of that, that there may be an issue out there, one of the um, inspectors from engineering can go out and take a look at that. So during periods of heavy, heavy rain, the rear of that property has rivers of mud that escalate towards Gerrard's Hill. So I think with development, this could be an increased concern for residents of Gerrard's Hill. Hmm. I have a few questions whenever, whenever there's a chance.
Uh, Dick, there's some raised hands on the screen that you need to call on. Stephanie, I think, has the next question. Okay. Um, I guess I have several questions. Um, just for the benefit of the people that who have not heard the presentation before, there are quite a few new people as well as to refresh our memories. Can you kind of give us an outline of the plan as far as the number of units? And um, from my, my recollection, it's a longer stay hotel. Is that correct? Just some more things about the property itself and how the development is going to look, how many stories, et cetera. You could start with that. And then I have a couple other questions after that. Sure, I could do that. Or Doug, if you're you're still on, do you want to just jump in and just talk about your what your plan is for the property? Sure, happy to. Yeah, thanks, Stephanie, and appreciate all you guys um, having us here. We we really appreciate the feedback from the first meeting and look to get some good feedback from this one. Um, the current plan is for a four story hotel there, Stephanie. Um, the the room count is not fixed yet. Um, somewhere between. 108 and I believe it's about 119. Um, still trying to trying to nail that down, but a, a four-story hotel there. Um, currently, the the brand will be one of longer stay, as you said. Um, the idea there is to to take some of the concerns on traffic count. Um, this keeps the traffic count extremely low um, because you don't have the one in and one out every night, like a, a typically functioning hotel. Um, there are also no restaurants or bars um, inside the hotel, so no food amenities. Uh, the idea there being that the guests at the hotel are driven out you know, into the already local operating restaurants, grocery stores, et cetera, um, and also keeping down on the traffic. Um, we are currently working with the ARB um, and the architects to, to design it better. So I don't have anything to, to show you there as far as, you know, exterior look. Um, but we're currently working with the ARB and their comments to, to design it um, in such a way that it, that it gels with the surrounding properties there on Pantops. Thank you very much. The other questions I have, just looking at that map, um, if you're having longer stay, I guess one thing is that if they have longer stay, they're probably doing business or staying, you know, doing some business within Charlottesville. So they're still going to be exiting and entering daily, I would think. I wouldn't think they'd just be staying at the hotel. So I'm not sure if that's valid as far as the decreased traffic flow. I think you'll still have the res whoever's renting going in and out. Um, at least that's my opinion from what, you know, thinking about it. The other question, I, the other, other concerns that I have is, it looks like you would exit on Hanson Mountain if you were going out. And then if you went down Hanson and then you were maybe going on to, um, if you were going down Richmond Road, and what, what your proposal was, if you were gonna make a left-hand turn, you would, you would have to get over from the second lane into the, um, into the first lane to be able to make that U-turn. And there's a lot of traffic in that area and there's no, um, there's no stoplight or anything, and it's sometimes hard to make a right-hand turn when there's a lot of traffic traffic flow um, going up Richmond Road. Um, and then the other question I have regarding traffic also is if you're, some of your clientele may be coming from 64 and they're coming um, into town, how would they access your hotel? Um, would they have to go through the giant shopping center and go around or how would that access happen? Because they can't really make a left-hand turn um, across um, Richmond Road onto Hanson. Sure, um, Justin, I'll let you take that one just because you're more familiar with the, the VDOT plans, et cetera, et cetera, there on 250, but I'm happy to jump in as well. Yeah, so traffic wise, again, this <clears throat> hotels really are pretty low traffic compared to other commercial uses, like compared to restaurants, banks, offices, um, so as far as like that, for, this, for the size of the parcel, the quantity of trips are not that high. But you're right, 250 is a busy road. So what will happen with the benefit of what VDOT's doing is this, from a safety standpoint, it's, it's, it's inconvenient from a business standpoint, but from a safety standpoint, what it gives you is you only have to deal with traffic from one direction at a time. Right now, if you're coming out of 250, 
and you want to make a left turn out of sight like this, right? You got to deal with the traffic coming both directions. With their new plan, you'll need to simply find a clear zone to pull out across one side of traffic. You'll pull into the, the, me the median, which will be a concrete protected median island, and you'll pull up and make a U-turn. So there will, you will have to wait for a break in traffic to pull across, but you only have to wait for a break in traffic headed one direction rather than both, which is the current situation. So that's why VDOT views that as a, a safer alternative. So if you were coming here from the other direction, if you wanted to come from the interstate in, a couple of things you could do. GPS might take you around um, past the hospital, around, down, and up around. You could do a loop like that. Or you'll be able to make a U-turn down closer to people place. You would come down the road and make a U-turn. Again, same principle, being you have to deal with traffic coming in one direction to come around and back to it. And that's, that's going to be a reality in this corridor for all the businesses on the corridor. And um, you know, DDOT's doing this because they feel that's safer. And uh, it will take maybe more time to get in and out of the parcel, but it's, it's safer in their judgment. That, that's true. So that's, that's what would happen for traffic in, in and out of this site. Okay. That's Thanks for the explanation. Yeah. I'm still, I, I still have grave concerns in reference to traffic flow and getting in and out as far as the safety and access. Yeah, just, just keep in mind that, that almost every business along this corridor looking at now has more traffic than this hotel does. So every single business that's been there for who knows how long, tip top been there, I don't know how long. They have probably four times the traffic this hotel does, maybe more. And so you're looking at, you know, everyone has to deal with it. But if you look at other corridors that are developed similarly, VDOT's doing this everywhere. I mean, it's for safety purposes. And yes, it'll take you an extra two minutes if you want to go. But that's, I think, is a reality we have to expect from here on out for these businesses. You know, again, it makes it, if you're driving through, it makes it safer for you and faster if you're driving through 250. If you're a business, it's inconvenient, but it's done in the name of safety inside. So you just need to expect that and live with it. It's okay. Is there a proposed break in the median at uh, Hanson? Yes, I believe, not to double check the latest map, the last one I've seen, they, they have a, a break, you would make a U-turn at Hanson's. So you would come out of our site, head east, make a U-turn, and go back to the direction. That, that, design, should, that design is not final. There's a sketch from VDOT about that, but they have not finished any final engineering on that. Oh, really? Where is the actual entrance to the property? Is it off of Abbey Road or is it off of 250? It's off 250. We have a frontage. You'll see there we have a couple hundred feet of frontage on 250 and there'll be an entrance directly on 250. So to get to Abbey Road, then you walk up a path. Is that the idea? Well, there's a sidewalk directly by the Sun Trust there. So you would, you would come up our site, walk up the sidewalk and hang a right and then walk into the neighborhood and there you go on to you go on to Applebee's or over to Sticks or up to the Giant or wherever you want to go from there. Okay. I'm not seeing anyone called on, so I'm just gonna jump in here. Um, Mr. Shimp, if the sidewalk, is there a sidewalk in front of your property? I don't believe there is one. Not at the moment. When we are done, there will be. There will be. Does that and that sidewalk will be a continuous sidewalk all the way to the edge of the Sun Trust? Correct. Yeah, it connects to the Sun Trust sidewalk, which will then okay. connect up to Hanson and Abbey. That's right. And does the Sun Trust sidewalk does that continue up to um, the shopping center? I am fairly certain, yes. I've been driven past that many times. I believe the sidewalk and the curb come down. I know they come down from around the corner and it's oh. all the right away. So we would connect to that. It may not go to the very end of their property, but we would connect to it. We'd be required to do that. Okay. And also who is, I remember last time when we had our meeting, um, we didn't know who the developer, what the owner of the property, what type of hotel. So we do know that now that's, that's Doug who's on, he's represented the property owner and it's going to be an extended stay brand hotel, a type of hotel. I don't know they know actually the exact brand right now. Doug, do uh, you know? Yeah, we're currently looking at three different ones right now. Um, they would all be 
the same building. Um, so just looking at different flags or brands to figure out the best fit there. Okay. Uh, and that can change. Uh, very, um, that could, from what I, if I told you one today, that could change, you know, in a week. Right. Or a month, so I, I, yeah. Right. I, I think um, if I remember correctly from the last meeting we had, that everyone was concerned about the um, the type of hotel, and you said it's going to fit in, uh, and yet we don't have anything to look at. But I think this committee would want to see something, uh, frankly, prior to going before the um, the planning commission, because otherwise there's no way for us to give our input regarding how this is going to look. Because I don't think anybody wants a lower end type of extended stay, I think you all mentioned that it would be, frankly, a higher end extended stay, and it would fit in well with the neighborhood, which is uh, nice, very nice. So. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, we are, again, working truly now with the ARB um, and the architect. We've, um, and Justin or, or Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you know, anybody is welcome to come to the ARB meetings or when we have a final sketch to present at the ARB meetings, happy to, to shoot it out to you all. Um, we're looking at different materials, um, trying to, again, what the ARB has asked us to do, we are responding to it um, now as far as visual exterior. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. This is not a lower end extended stay hotel, like you may have thought of kind of the old model um, on long term. Um, we know that doesn't fit in the Pantops neighborhood. It wouldn't be good to put it there for anybody. Um, it, we, are, we are targeting a higher end boutique um, extended stay clientele. Um, one of you mentioned these are people who are, who are coming to the community to work um, on various projects, not um, you know, kind of the traditional um, old old style of what you what you may have in your head of of quote unquote long term stay. Right. Um, that is absolutely not what we're going for here. Okay, because of that, I think it would be very important for this committee to uh, see what it would look like because you still have to get zoning approval. Correct. Well, let me jump in here. See, so, yeah, we do. But I think we should just clarify a couple things. So that you know, the zoning in the county, just like a hotel is a hotel. We don't actually classify between the different types of hotels. So we don't want to necessarily, I, I think, just to be clear to everybody, one could build an extended stay hotel and convert it into a different sort of hotel on the road. I don't, I don't want anyone to be, um, you know, thinking that this is that limited. Now, this owner has, is in the business of building an extended stay hotel, it's the right product the site is to the you know what what it has to be two things here that the site development cost of this site are expensive and the you're in the architectural review overlay district and therefore the materials and everything else lend themselves the same sort of higher end building because that's that's what's required and that's separate of zoning so regardless of what gets built here what kind of hotel whether it be any kind of business the county already has rules in place that set a dictate a standard for construction. So that, that's the architecture review board. Again, anyone's welcome to, to go to that, but the, the county zoning regulations do not, that we're talking about for this approval, don't generally get into that detail because you already have a, a set board with set policies that dictates that. So I just won't, it's certainly, it's part of the discussion and we're having an ARB meeting prior to the zoning so everyone can see that we've been through the process and vetted the materials with the, the governing body that does that. But it's just, it's a little bit, it's separate from the zoning slightly. It's just wanna make sure everyone's aware of that, that there's a separate project or separate process, separate procedures, separate regulations that govern that. Regardless, even if this would not require a rezoning, if we weren't here, we'd have to go through that process and they'd have, you'd have to follow all the same guidelines. So if you look, you know, all the newer buildings on Pantops, uh, think like the Virginia National Bank building, others, you know, those are brick buildings. They have a certain, you know, aesthetic quality to them that is required. And so regardless of what brand we use or anything like that, 
the building has to have those clauses. Just make sure everyone's aware of that. No, situation. good. Thank you. No further questions. Oh, I, I have a question. Um, do you have a definition of an extended day hotel that's different than a suite ho all suite hotel? This is a, this is an all suites hotel. Um, like you said, extended stay doesn't necessarily um, mean you know it's under this night or over this night. This is an all suites hotel. Okay. Is that um, so? So these suites will have. Uh, you know, little bref breakfast nooks with uh, stoves and things like that? Correct. Okay, thanks. I have a, I have a question. Hello? Um, Dick, uh, Ron has a question. Uh, yeah, I, I, at the January meeting, I think it was mentioned that the the, the rough approximate height of the building was um, roughly met the top of the bank, the SunTrust Bank, uh, roughly, I'm talking about now. Is, is that still true? Yeah, that's still the case. No, nothing has really changed about the site layout or elevations from the, from the first meeting. Okay. Um. Nick here, am I right in thinking your property is above that triangular square uh, where the ground goes sharply down from 250? That's right, yes, it's, 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 a, it's above that. It, as you get to the back of the property, they become kind of the same elevation. Yeah. But you start off, yeah, that, that, that triangular property is, is more uh, steeply sloped away from the road than ours is. Yeah. It doesn't look buildable. Yeah. Any other questions? I have one more question. You mentioned at the very beginning in reference to um, proffers. Um, what, were there, are there any proffers related to the um, proposal at the moment? Well, there are proffers in the sense that it's a, a plan district. I suppose maybe a proffer statement as well, but effectively, I mean, Andy mentioned this and that the development of this parcel is governed by a master plan that was approved by the Board of Supervisors in like the 1990s and then re re revised later in the 2000s. And so this is basically a revision of that. So some property, like if you were zoned highway commercial, you, would, you could build the hotel without going through this particular process. This parcel is subject to sort of a, a zoning overlay that requires the board to approve any substantial changes to what was previously approved. So the land still zoned commercial, it's effectively proffered that there would not be a hotel on this location. We're amending the application plan to allow that to occur, basically. Thanks for the answer. Any further questions? Uh, yes, I have one further question regarding uh, going back to um, Ida Lee's question. Um, I realize that she's got to wait until there's a inundation of a lot of rain um, and she's mentioned that the there's flooding or mud that goes into the carriage hill area and at that point in time if that happens she can contact the county um justin would it be all right or mr shimp would it be also be okay for her to contact you so that you all can know uh what's happening and what kind of mitigation you have to enforce Sure, Justin's fine, by the way. And okay. uh, yes, uh, no, you, you're, you're fine to reach out to us. Um, we're happy to go and look at it. We, 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 if, there's, if there's a problem there, I'm not aware of it. And just knowing the land, I don't think it originates with us, but it's no problem okay. to look at it. It's just one of those things that in the we're zoning, we're talking about what could be built in the site right now. Once we get to a point when we're gonna build something, 
that's when it's kind of a default. For example, if I submit a construction plan to the county engineering department, they'll go out to the site and look at some of these things. So we're a little bit ahead of that now, but there's no reason that we can't go look at it. And if it's caught, if it's a problem on our property, then it'll be by ordinance, we have to deal with that. So we just need okay. to know what it is. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bing. You're welcome. <laughs> and I think I think you might get a faster response out of Mr. Shimp. <laughs> That's why I included him. Okay, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I think we'll uh, call a close to the presentation. We thank you, uh, Justin and uh, all of your input. Uh, I guess it's on, the process continues on uh, for the agreed upon schedule, so. That's right, yeah, thank you all for your time and we'll, uh, you'll follow, follow up with Andy in the, if you wanna check out the ARB meeting, I think that'll be in December sometime. Um, if you wanna just see what the latest are, we, so we don't have those at the moment, but that's the process if you're interested to check that out. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you all. And I was going to add to that, this is Andy, that I'd be happy to coordinate with Margaret Malashevsky, who is the county's um, planning manager with the Architectural Review Board, um, just to um, let you all know when the date with the ARB for this project is and links to the staff report and the um, any exhibits for this project. And I'd be happy to send that information out to the group as well once I've spoken with Margaret. Thank you. That'll be that'll be very, very helpful. Okay. Moving on to the agenda is the uh, issue of electing a secretary to work uh, with me and for the for the committee, I really would appreciate if uh, one of you would take it take it on. It's only going to be for four or five meetings. You know, we know we don't meet in December, so it's January through through June, maximum at this point of six meetings. Uh, I'm reluctant to just. Uh, force it on someone because I know you all have different schedules and and different commitment to it but if if somebody would uh, be willing to step up to uh, the position I'd appreciate it if not if you would step up at a, at future meetings to take on a single meeting I'd appreciate that as well Dick I don't I don't want you to be left holding the bag on this um, if I could get your help on, I'm not a great note taker. I try to take some notes, but if, uh, if you could work with me on, on this, I could try to hammer out something on this meeting. Um, I can take care of this it. meeting, Dick, because I've been taking notes. So if I can work with you for future meetings, that would be great. Okay. But you, you can handle this one all right? I'll handle this one, yes. Yep. Would somebody make a uh, motion to appoint Dick Ruffin as secretary of the Cantop CAC? So move. Okay, Lou, second to that? Oh, second. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Ron, okay. You guys may live to regret that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, B, you're up for any liaison updates that you would like to present to us. Okay, thank you very much. And um, thank you, um, Mr. Ruffin for volunteering um, to be our secretary until June. <laughs> um, uh, the latest updates, uh, we had a meeting, the Board of Supervisors had a meeting with the, our local legislators, including Sally Hudson, Rob Bell, um, uh, uh, someone from Cree Deed's office, someone from uh, um, Ms. Senator Reeve's office also. Um, and we are looking to get enforcement ability 
um, to be able to have um, cameras, well, uh, speed cameras to be placed on certain roads where it's not feasible for the police to pull someone over um, to be able to safely, safely pull them over. We're talking about two lane rural roads like 22, 231, uh, 20, and those are in, in just in the Vivana district. Um, but we have roads where people are speeding. It's not safe for the residents uh, to even cross because they have to cross the street to get their mail. But it's not safe for the residents even to pull in and out of their driveways. And we, so this is a way of controlling that speed. We thought of many different things, but we realized that um, photo cameras, photo speed cameras would be the best thing. They do this a lot in Europe. If you've been to Europe, you see where they have, they'll have a sign on the side of the road that says, has a picture of a camera. So, you know, it's somewhere along that road, there is actually a, uh, you know, speed camera that will take the picture, send you a bill, and then, you know, you can go from there. This is safer for our law enforcement officers uh, who really cannot pull you know, cars off the road because there's no, you can have a miles long backup. It's only a two lane road. So those are one of the things. We're also looking at uh, some of our fines where for zoning and such, well, not so much zoning, but some of our other fines, instead of making them criminal fines to actually make them civil fines so that we don't, um, we're not criminalizing some of the things that people do, we can we can find them. And if they still, after a certain amount of time and money, if they still don't comply, then you can always go into the criminal enforcement. But we would like to decriminalize, frankly, a lot of the, um, the things that we do and just have it where you're fined and, and it's a civil penalty, not a criminal penalty. And the last one is the, uh, these are our three priorities. The last one is, for the safety, as you all realize, and especially in our area, there are a number of locations for either ciders or wedding venues or, you know, events to make. And people want to have a barn and they want to convert their barn to a wedding venue or a party venue, things like that. And we want to make sure that these barns are safe that they have fire detectors, uh, you know, smoke detectors, they have a, a, a push bar so you can easily get out and make sure you have enough exits. That way the people in there, if something happens that they're protected, they can get out. So that's the other thing, Mi basically minimum standards uh, for those who wanna hold events in their barns, or, you know, structure also. So that's the latest uh, here. <laughs> our oh, our Ron Lance, chief of police, he's retiring at the end of the year. Uh, so we're looking for a nationwide search for a replacement. Also, our county attorney, Greg Kampner, who is fantastic also. Uh, he's retiring early next year, looking for a re um, nationwide replacement. And... Yeah, that's about it. We're having a quite a few retirements because people are reaching that age that they want to retire. <laughs> so that's about it for, for here, for me. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Ron. Uh, this question is probably more for Rachel, but <laughs> B, you brought, you brought up the question a, lot, a couple of meetings back about the Tobys um, using a, a, his military truck for a sign. Yeah. It's become a permanent thing. Yeah, evidently, uh, Rachel, maybe you can, I think you followed up on that, but I, I don't think there's anything we can do about that. That's what my understanding is. But Rachel, can you clarify that? That's correct. It's not considered a sign. It's a vehicle and it, it's up to registration and all the requirements. So it's not a sign. It's a legal vehicle. So, yeah. uh, I had one question. I know that there was something in the paper. I know that you were talking. They were talking about um, um, plastic bags and um, and grocery shopping and trying to decrease the, those um, and trying to get rid of those. Yes, as far, we're, as, as far as environmental control. 
Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, we actually are looking into a local ordinance where we will have a five cent uh, per disposable plastic bag. Um, you know, the businesses would would have to do that. So that way we can reduce the number of disposable plastic bags, you know, the ones that tear up easily and you find them flying all over the place. So that's what we're looking at, um, at doing. Um, I think that, yeah. And we're also looking at increasing uh, cigarette tax to the maximum of 40 cents additional. And we're forming a regional um, cigarette tax uh, entity with, with the surrounding counties and the city of Charlottesville so that we can all have um, increased the cigarette tax. The state legislature has given us a permission to do that. And we're, the 40 cents is the maximum we can add on to a pack of cigarettes. So we're doing that, hopefully. So B, what's the timeline for the plastic bag? Um, I, it'll so come, yeah, we have to write up an ordinance and everything It's coming, uh, probably sometime in the new year. Brian? I mean, what, what's the status on the, the equity profile? What's the next steps on that? When you say the equity profile? When we had the joint meeting and they talked about uh, our equity profile for the county of Albemarle and where we stand with that as far as implementing what policies, procedures where we may not have right. met certain standards or that we want, what, what is the right. next phase of that? Well, regarding equity and inclusion, I do know that all the ordinances that we do pass and any regulations that we do pass, we're looking at that. Uh, we are looking at that. I mean, as someone brought up the issue of, well, increasing cigarette tax uh, affects the um, um, people that low income people more so than, you know, someone who has a lot of income. And I, we all realize that, but also we're hoping that this will stem the increase in cigarette smoking, especially by the young people. Hopefully if it's enough money, then they won't, they won't start smoking in the first place. That's happened in other localities. Uh, but we do look at everything that we pass through the lens of equity and inclusion. If that answers your question, I'm not sure, but we're very cognizant of that. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, have we ever given consideration for red light cameras? Uh, we're actually, I asked, we had a red light camera at Hydraulic and 29. That was before they built the overpass and uh, Rio and 29. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's now, we don't need that anymore because we have the overpass. I have asked that that be placed at uh, 250 and 20. And so I've asked for that. They're working on it. In fact, I spoke with the police department today and that is something that they are working on. Um, and we might even increase that. We do have that authorization. So hopefully we can increase the number of red light cameras. Um, I will tell you, we do have the authorization to have camera fo um, photo speed cameras in school zones and construction zones. So that's why we're asking, we already have that authority from the, uh, from the state. And we'll be, and we're looking at um, uh, to, to, to where Albemarle High School is and implementing that along there. Um, and so now we're asking the state legislature to give us a little bit more authorization to increase that in order to save people. Because just on 22 in the past few months, we've had two crashes and a fatality. And you know, on Pantops, we had a fatality, but that, that was um, tragic also. Yeah, that's true, yeah. But I don't know if speed was involved in any of them, so. Anything else? A question. Yes, Ann. Um, so are you, have you considered the University of Virginia area? There's a lot of congestion there. And whenever I'm driving there, I mean, the erratic driving, aggressive driving, I see a lot of that in that area. And I also see a lot of a speeding on 250 and on 29. 
I mean, in the middle of the day. Yes, uh, that would be addressed more so with um, police, uh, more police surveillance. University of Virginia, that's, it's like they're their own separate country. But for 29 and 250, we can ask for more uh, police surveillance. Uh, and if you have any specific or any like time range or something like that, then I can check with the with Chief Lance. Um, the speed cameras, we're not going to get it for those, I don't think, yet. So we're trying it out on the rural roads, two lane high, uh, two lane roads where police can't stop uh, the traffic. So the other stuff we have to use law enforcement. Okay. And also, I don't know if this is in your, um, if this is something that you would be, um, could address, but at, there is a lot of traffic, um, uh, there's a lot of traffic on 29 right before you get to Canes. Um, there's a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably yeah. heard that from a lot of people before. Uh, There's a long line, and I've also I've seen people almost rear in other cars and try to zip out, and you know, just getting frustrated. So, well, yes, believe me, I've seen it too. I couldn't believe all these cars that are going south lined up at Canes, and I'm going, my God, are you kidding? When did that chicken get so good? I yeah. mean. Is the chicken really that good? I don't know, but they were all lined up. You're right. Unfortunately, that's in the city of Charlottesville. Okay. All right. So I can't. <laughs> I had to ask. No, good question. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Lori, do you have anything that you want to bring up? If Corey's still with us. Yeah. I didn't think he signed on. Am I wrong? I don't think he's a, he, he, um, he, oh, you're he, right. he didn't sign on. I'm yeah, sorry. he didn't sign on. Yep, didn't sign on. Okay. Any other uh, business that would anybody like brought up? Yes, Ron. Um, I know Dick is our liais liaison for uh, the bridge project, but I thought the bridge meetings were going to start in November. So does anybody know when the meetings are going to start for the uh, for the bridge, a bridge over the river project? Yes, there's one tomorrow ah. at three o'clock. Um, I don't know how to get you on. I would be very glad, but I will be there tomorrow at three. Okay. Is this is a Zoom meeting, I assume? Yes. Uh, it's a Zoom meeting. Yes. Can I, uh, Rachel, do you know if uh, can Carolyn get me a link sent to me or something? Or I thought links were going to be sent out to the entire to the entire PCAC, um No, that uh, board. Uh, my understanding, that this is not for all the uh, community act uh, committee, uh, but just for those who've been nominated from a number of different jurisdictions. There may be twelve. Oh. Uh, and I, I, I don't know. I can't do it. I would love to do it, Ron. Yeah. Okay. This is one meeting that I don't have anything to do with. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the, the it's the Thomas Jefferson Planning District Commission. I could reach out and ask if they're open to the public. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not super familiar with this committee and what their um, protocols are around whether they're open or closed, but I will ask and let y'all know. Uh, Ron, I could ask uh, Sandy. Uh, is it Shackleford? Uh, I've had coffee with her about this and I think she's right on top of this one. Uh, maybe I could ask her whether you could be sent a link. Okay, thank you. I'll do that yeah. tomorrow morning and sh if she can do it, she'll send it to you. It's okay. Three o'clock, just for your calendar. Okay, thank you. Question for Rachel. I've heard that somewhere in the relatively near future, there will be a process to update the Pantops five-year plan. Is that correct? Or is what I'm reading, and I'm not interpreting it correctly? I think you may have been reading about the county-wide plan, the comprehensive plan. Um, that, pro 
process uh, is just getting started. We're doing some kind of staff internal work to get ready and there'll be a public kickoff in January. And it's the countywide comprehensive plan. So I will share with the committee members information about that in January. We're right now we're just building up a website and getting our communication and outreach plan together. Um, but in the new year, we're planning to kind of kick it off and share that with the public. Okay. Any other issues? B, I would have one for you, a general question. It seems to me that so many communities, so many cities, states are got excess funds that came out of the federal government that they have money stacked up. They don't know what to do with it. They're not sure to how to allocate it. What's the status with our county in that regard? Do, do we yeah. have a substantial amount of money that has already come to us or is coming to us in that regard? Well, we do have a lot of money that has already come to us and that we've already uh, used. We especially helped uh, the businesses, um, to, frankly, to stay open and also for the schools and uh, everything they needed. Um, we ha currently have about 13.2 million in surplus. It's a one-time uh, one -time monies. So it's not like it can be used for salaries or, or things like that because it is one-time monies. Um, but and we're, uh, the board is still deciding where to use this. We'll be getting some more input from the county executive's uh, office regarding um, suggestions and we're gonna have suggestions. So to know where we can spend it. A lot of these monies, is the, the ARPA funds, come with with restrictions. And so understanding what the restrictions are, where we can use it, that's what we're doing. Um, and we're and I know the schools will also benefit from the extra monies too. And just to let you know that uh, part of the reason also we have a surplus is because of the fact that when the pandemic help uh, started, we basically kind of you know tightened down on everything. We continue to have services for our community, but we also tightened down a lot of um, positions we did not hire. Uh, people worked more, and we didn't hire positions to help that. And so we had um, there were a lot of we had our revenues exceeded our expenditures. So I think we've been very responsible as a county. Um, and having this surplus that we just, we're going to be having discussions as far as what to do with those monies. And you consider any of that for the smart scale projects? Uh, smart scale projects, those are VDOT state projects. Um, however, if we do, I don't, hmm, that's a good question actually, because I think we can, if we give some monies for a smart scale, smart scale project, then there's probably a better chance of it being funded. But um, there are a lot of needs. Um, so whether, I don't think smart scale has come into it yet. But were you thinking of something specific? No, I just, oh. the whole concept of smart scale is, is I think, quite unique for, as a planning yes. document. Right. And you identify the kind of money that's needed and my thought would be if that could be matched up with some of these government generated funds, it would advance the projects. Yes, that if the if the board decides to place those monies, um, if it's approved to do that, then that could be done. Okay. Any other uh, questions or input? Well, it's 7.30, then I will... Uh, call the meeting to adjourn and uh, look forward to our next meeting in January. There is no meeting in December based on our vote at our last meeting. So it'll be the fourth or fifth Monday in January, whatever it is. Thank you. Okay. Have a good Have holiday a all of you. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Happy holidays, everyone. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Take care. Thank you all.